So, I am uh, dealing with a topic which is different from what already you had uh, in the morning and now excellent topic. But I also take a glance of that, then I'll go to principal component analysis, what it is. So I think you know this man. How many of you wants to become like him? Okay. So everything should be made as simple as possible, but not simpler. Okay. So why I am here in front of the doctors or biologists or non-mathematicians? Why I am standing here and talking to you? Because there is a lot of variability where patients vary, physicians vary, nurses vary, hospitals vary, measurements vary, disease patterns vary, immune response varies, drug adherence varies. There is no place where there is no variation. Even the twins are not same. To capture the variation, the science of statistics is evolved. Okay. I have been asking this question, what do you know about statistics since one and a half decade to all the students? What do you know about statistics? So I know, back of your mind, you all will be saying like this. But whether you like it or you don't like it, there is no other science available for you to estimate your results. You have to use the statistics. So someone says, you torture the numbers and they will confess to anything. That's what from 2 o'clock onwards you have been subjected and I have my share of one hour now. Okay. okay. So people also say that there are three types of lies. Lies, damn lies, and third one I don't want to tell from my mouth. It is, someone says that. But it is not true. If you misuse the statistics, it will become damn lie. Okay. So therefore, as since morning they were telling nuisance variables are uh, uh, wrong analysis that will make you the damn lie of the statistics. Please don't do that. So you also should interpret the results in a correct manner. Sometimes when you get decimals and all, you people will get confused why 2.2 deaths has happened, 3.5 deaths has happened. So the same thing has happened to the health minister of England also. A royal commission reviewing the statistics report where it is said that the middle class families on the average have 2.2 children. He is very upset with that. How can 2.2 children a family can have? Three children can have, four children can have. He is scolding everyone. How can you give these kind of wrong statistics? Then they constituted a committee. The committee said like this. The figure of 2.2 children for adult female in some respect is absurd. It is suggested that the middle classes be paid money to increase the average to a rounded and more co convenient number. So you, will, so you will get the decimals that you should not bother. Fine. So now coming to the subject. So if you see this, this is what we have been listening since morning, isn't it? So if you see the dependence and independence, whatever it is that now the regression and correlation we have been taught. So if they are quantitative variables, we have the regression analysis. You have the survival analysis, you have the analysis of variance. Qualitative, we have the discriminant function analysis, logistic regression, and conjoint analysis. Now coming to the metric data. So the data, which is metric and also interdependent, means I don't have any hypothesis to say. I will ask the data to tell what are you, how are you, what you are, what, you, what are you up to, have you got any patterns. That kind of a data analysis, now I am going to talk, probably that will bore you and also torture you for some time. That is called principal component analysis and also cluster analysis. Anyhow, ma'am will also demonstrate that. But I, these, are a, these are all called the interdependent variables. So I'll tell what are they. So if you see the classification, what will happen? For example, you have the type of outcome as inter, uh, interval uh, estimation. So outcome may be blood pressure or weight or temperature and the, relate, the type of bivariate analysis you can do is correlation and regression. That's what now the Professor Pandey told you. And also multiple, multivariate level you can do multiple linear regression that I know. If it is a dichotomous variables, you have, for example, the outcome is death, cancer or intensive care unit admissions. You can do all sorts of morning also. It was taught now chi-square test. Chi-square test, multiple logistic regression in the multivariate way you can do. If it is ordinal, stage of disease or severity of symptoms, you can again do the chi-square test or multivariately you can do proportional odds regression. 
If it is a nominal data, we can do cause of death site of cancer. We can do chi-square or ANOVA or Kurskal Valleys. If it is a counts data, number of infections, number of hospital admissions, you have the, you have the outcome. Then you can do the poison regression, negative binomial regression, so on and so forth. This is the battery of tests which you have to undertake. Okay? Again, I'm just telling to you the uncertainty before I go further. Ultimately, you have to remove the uncertainty. So why statistics is for uncertainty? So what are the different types of uncertainties you have? Induction. The induction means creation of knowledge based on observational data. Some data you have, some, some hypothesis you have, some clue you have. Whereas abduction, creation of knowledge with intuition means just like they think. So the symbiosis, the education is very good. Until unless proved, it's, it's, you say that it's very good. That person is bad. This girl is bad. Like that, you know, intuitionally you will see. So, so how it affects the scientific research. And also, you have the deduction, creation of the knowledge with verification of proposed theories. Okay? These are the things. So I just give an example how deduction is. What is the deduction definition? What do you mean by deduction? Creation of knowledge based on observational data. Okay, sorry. Creation of the knowledge with with what? Verification of proposed theories. I will say that these two are same. So like that I say. So how it happens? So take this example. So had it, if I said that 2 plus 2 is 5, could you prove any other proposition you like? Had it says, yes, I think so. Then prove that Mac target is the Pope. If 2 plus 2 is 5, then 5 is 4. Subtracting 3 from each side, three, 5 minus 3 is 4 minus 3, 2 is 1. Therefore, MacTaggart and Pope are 2, but 2 is 1, therefore both are same. So this is what, no, this is just called a, a kind of a assumption is given, you stick to that. That is the danger, we also go. How abduction will affect you? Is intuition, something you have in mind. So I just give an example, which Professor C.R. Rao book it is given. The prince traveling through his domains notices a man in cheering crowd who bore a striking resemblance to himself. He beckoned him over and asked, was your mother ever employed in my place, palace? No, sir, the man replied, but my father was. So this is not because he got shocked because he got some intention. He, he doesn't have any hypothesis or any, anything to prove. But whereas what you have to do is this, which is called induction. You always should have some hypothesis with some claim, then all you will prove with that. So these are all the things, you know, it, you say, is Tylenol is better than Burfin in relieving the headache? Does eating eat uh, oat bran cereal reduces the cholesterol? These are all the right things which you have the hypothesis because you have some assumption with you. Fine. So as everyone is telling now, so how do you categorize all these examples? For example, we have only simple descriptions, one. So comparison of group means, for example, you have, that is generally you do the t-test, no? You take t-test, comparison of more than two, uh, two groups, you do one over and associations you do, and determine, determining the effect of so intervention also you prove. These are all the things which you do, okay? Then, so also they were telling the naming of the variables, no? So even in before class also. So the variable measure subject to response. You will call that as a response or outcome variable or dependent variable, both are same. So if you have a dependent variable or response variable, both are same, the naming is same. So the nomenclature is same. Suppose the variable which will explain the response variable, it may be explanatory variable or independent variable. If someone says independent variable, that is also an explanatory variable. So don't get confused with the explanatory variable and independent variable. And also you have the outcome and response, both are same. Treatment and factor, both are same. So these are the different nomenclatures that's been given. Okay? So now coming to why multivariate data. What for multivariate data is? For example, we live in a multivariate world. Nothing is univariate, isn't it? Everything is more than one variable. So most events, whether medical, political, social, or personal, have a multiple causes, and these causes are related to one another. Multivariate analysis is a statistical tool for determining the relative contributions of different causes to a single event or outcome. Okay? So coming to multivariate data analysis, data can, generally what happens? When you go to the field, so since I have gone to the field, you always collect large number of variables. 
way, time, arm size, demography. So, so hundred variables you collect. So without sometimes you also, you also since I have gone there, I can collect those data. So that also happens. So therefore, however, due to computational intractability, so 20 years back, so we are not able to do the computations because we did not have the powerful computers as you have now. So multivariate, so you know, it was not possible at that time. Now we have got a lot of computation power. You can do anything with the data. So now the multivariate data has become more popular and more also being used in the artificial intelligence. They say artificial intelligence, deep learning, that, that's stylishly they say, but they are using statistics only most of the time. Therefore, what is the principal component analysis? Don't get confused with it. I will tell what is the principal component analysis simply. Suppose as a, a medical doctor, you have collected say 150 variables or 150 variables information with you. Can you interpret all the 150 variables information and tell the patient or to whoever, whatever it is, the outcome or the interpretation? It is not only difficult but impossible. 150 variables, two, three variables itself is difficult. So if at all, then my next question is, what to, how to do that? If at all I have got the technique where I can reduce all the 150 variables into five or 10 linear combinations which in turn will explain all the variation of all the 150 variables. Am I not successful? Do I or not? I, I am. Because I am 150 variables, all the total variation, because I am not losing any information. Two, 10 linear combinations, which these 10 variables are linear combinations, not variables, linear combinations, will explain all the variables of 150. Am I not successful? I am. When it is possible? When? All the 150 variables, in the 150 variables, there is an interrelationship. Suppose 150 variables are not correlated, each other. They are 150. Then how many principal components you get? 150 you get. What is the use? No use. See if your data is correlated among themselves. Suppose you have a large number of data. Can I reduce that large number into a very smaller number so that I can interpret that? That is called principal component analysis. Principal component analysis, other name is dimension reduction. So this is more data science people are there here, anyone? Raise your hands. So you heard about principal component analysis? Yes. So, so they, 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 I'll tell you, they will take some other name and use all, all the principal component and they don't, don't give any uh, credit to statisticians. Thank you. So, so that is the one. So you understand now, don't, don't, don't bother about the equation. My problem is I have 150 variables. I am not able to interpret that. I want to reduce that 150 variables dimension into a smaller dimension of 5 or 10 variables. And if at all, then 5 or 10 linear, com we call it linear combination, not variable, will explain all the 150 variables information at least 70 to 80%. Am I successful or not? I am. So otherwise, 150 variables, what do you play? 150 cross tabulations you do, which will not give you the total variation of the data set. So this is the one, fine. Okay, so when to use the principal component? So we have a P, suppose say P means 150 continuous variables and you want to repackage their variance into small components. So M to N means, I means 150 to 10, I mean to say, and you will usually want to be, but not always. So when you will not get the principal components reduced when they are uncorrelated. And the data is uncorrelated, you will get 150 principal components. What is the use of that? Your original data is 150, you got 150 principal components. There is no use. So when you want to reduce the dimension, if at all it get reduced, then when will, it get, when will it get reduced? When there is a interrelation among the sets of variables. You understand? Then. So, so what are the, uh, uh, how they form the principal components? The principal components once formed, I mean the dimension is reduced, it is in, in, the, in, the, in the level of order. First principal components explains the maximum, followed by second, followed by third, followed by fifth. But the combination, all the five linear combination or principal components which you have evolved are uncorrelated between numbers. They are uncorrelated. So another advantage of that, can anyone tell you? Is it regression, what is your assumption? The independent variables are uncorrelated. But most of the times they are correlated. You can check. 
multicollinearity. Yeah. So give her a big clap. I want to tell she told. So to remove the multicollinearity, this is the best pro procedure. You make all the variables into principal component scores, then apply as independent variable blindly because the principal component scores are uncorrelated once they evolve. Understand? Thank you. Then, so whatever it is. So one, this is order of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10. Sometimes you get 12, 15. So like that you get. Suppose 150 variables got converted into 150 linear combinations, 10, 15 linear combinations, you are successful, isn't it? So that is the advantage of this. Is it not advantage? Very much advantage, especially the multidimensional data where medical doctors, psychometricians, the people use, econometric people. So they cannot do, they, they, there is no other way except reducing their data. But they want the data, they need the data. Fine. Then, sorry. So for this we need a, so procedurally, anyhow the Google Baba is there, lot of softwares are there, you can use them. So SPSA, STAT, uh, Madam is going to tell in R. So lot of things are there. But correlation matrix or covariance matrix is the ingredient for that. If, the, if you just see the correlational matrix and the all are uncorrelated, don't use principal component, no use. If they are uncorrelated, there are no correlation, there is no use of using PCA because they are, if it are, they are uncorrelated, you cannot, PCAs cannot be formed. Understand? Fine. So what I, what I'm going to tell you is the highest is the PC1 variation followed by PC2, followed by PC3, like that you will get. It is in order. Okay? Then. So coming to data science people, how they stolen our, our statistics. So they call estimation as learning. We call estimation. Now they renamed it as a learning. Classifier as a hypothesis. Data point, sorry, uh, regression as a supervised learning. What a beautiful name they are given. Classification, also a supervised learning. PCA and cluster analysis, they gave the name as unsupervised learning. Covariate, they said as a feature. And response, they, they put, they name it as a label. So nicely labeled, but everything is this. So, so I am not criticizing that is data science is need of the hour, but how? So don't get no panic or don't get fascinated by these words. These are all statistical words. They have been using since 18th century. So these are all just renamed for the sake of their whatever it is. That is, uh, uh, but this you should understand. These are the things. Fine. I just see the data. This is the data. I just run run it. This is NFHS five survey. Anyone of you aware of that? NFHS five. Yeah. So this is six lakhs data. 732 districts information on 20 variables. I just took only 20 of all the demographic, health, social, all variables. But 2022 variables is difficult for me to interpret. Then I ran PCA compound analysis, whether I get, I can be condensed or not. Using the SPSS, you can do any package, Stata, SAS, or R, or Python, whatever it is. Okay, this is the way you should do. So I got two, four, six. Six principal component scores from 21 variables, I, if at all I can take these six principal component linear combinations, I can effectively tell 72% of the variation of the entire data. Generally, thumb rule is that if it is more than 60%, you can go ahead with that. But I could get with, why did I stop there uh, actually? In the sixth point, I could have gone for 20 also. Why did I stop? At six only I stopped and did not proceed further. Because there is again a theory, if your value, this total or eigen value we call, if it is less than one, we stop there. Where it got less than one? At the seventh point. So I stopped at six. So I then I interpreted that my 21 variables information can be reduced to six linear combinations with 72% of the variation has been explained of all the 25 variables. Am I successful or not? I am. So, so then you can see the order also. First principal component explains around 40%. Second will explaining 13. So as the component increases, the contribution of that percentage gets reduced. Understand this? So therefore, now, if you convert this into principal component scores, again you can, there is a formula how to convert these six principal components using the raw data. 
Then you take the correlation matrix. How much is the correlation you can say? Tell me how much correlation you get among the variables. Zero. Otherwise, the principal component is wrong. The analysis is. It is zero. It would be zero. So then what's the advantage? Your multicollinearity has been minimum, removed, not minimized. So you have some, some other techniques to remove the multicollinearity, but this is the best way. You have zero independent. All the independent variables are zero wave correlation. So your regression is perfect, always. Do you agree? Shall I go further? Yes. So, so I just I, I also wanted to tell you the components which I am taken. So which are the variables that are contributing also I can tell. Generally, the thumb rule again is, if at all these are called Eisen values, Eisen vectors. So if at all that is more than 0 0.5, that is almost a covariate analysis, correlation. Only I will consider, remaining I will, I will leave, I don't take. So that, then again also it tells you what are the variables that are contributing that we call as a factor, is it not? So how it is, suppose in this, the first variable, the third variable, the fifth variable, they are dominating. In the second component, it is the 13th variable that is dominating. In the fifth component, maybe the 20th variable it is dominating. So that's why it calls, it's also advantage of getting the factors, getting the patterns, okay? Then, just we'll go, we'll go to this, and then another example of diet, how this is interesting, you can see this. So, these are the diets, of, of the of the diets means the food they have consumed, dairy products, cereals, meat, so on and so forth. They run a principal component analysis. So if you see this, how beautifully the factors have formed and how they named it. Sorry. Yeah, you see, in the first factor, the dominant variables are meat, vegetables, and fruits. They, so these are the so they named it that as a prudent variables. You know what is prudent? They are prudent variables. In the second component, cereals and pulses are dominant variables. They named it as what? That is up to you. This is what you are the subject as. We have to tell that. Traditional variables. So the third one, uh, the dairy products and vegetable, uh, no, 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 no. Processed foods and sweets are dominating. They named it as a snacks. So this is not only helping you to reduce the dimension, but also telling you what are the patterns in that. So I have the prudent pattern, I have the traditional pattern, I have the snacks. So these are the three patterns which are affecting the data. That's all. Is it not useful to you? It is. Then, then Madam Minivo deals with cluster analysis, but I'll just go through what is a cluster analysis? What is the difference between principal component? This is, these things you can read or don't read, I'll tell. So, <laughs> what is a cluster analysis? Why we call a cluster? What do you mean by cluster? What do you mean by cluster, please? No, you are a cluster, cluster of symbiosis people sitting here. Suppose, if I ask you to assess the prevalence of goiter of 10 to 5, 5 to 10 years or 6 to 10 years children, what would you immediately remember? Don't remember anything? School, generally six, for sixth class, sixth year is first class, second class, third class, so that's just a cluster. Cluster means a group of people are, so I'm coming to that, what is this? So what is a cluster analysis? So someone is asking the question, I have questionnaire, uh, I have 10, 15 variables, I don't know what to do. So who is, is he left? Okay, he's left, he has left. So for that kind of scenario, when you have the data with you, so you don't know, you don't have any hypothesis. So then you can ask the um, um, technique, hey, can you give, uh, can you, are you homogeneous or you have some patterns? Suppose every data is homogeneous, then you will not form any clusters. If it is not, some clusters will form. So what is the criteria of the cluster? What is the criteria of the cluster? Within the cluster, they are same. When compared to others, they are different. That is the criteria. How do I get that? How do I get? I guess it's very simple to say, you have the data of 20 variables. How do you make them into, and also you have, say, 500 cases, 500 subjects, 20 variables. How do you make them into clusters? 
that's called based on the distances. What do you mean by distance? Heard about distance? Suppose the distance from me and him is say 5 meters. The distance from me and last is say 20 meters. Are we similar or dissimilar? Dissimilar. How? Suppose I have ca calculated his weight, height, arm circumference, chest circumference, all these things. And also my weight, height, all the similar same 10 variables. I just calculate the distance, Euclidean distance, simple distance. His weight minus my weight, his height minus my height. Like that, no? That's Euclidean distance. Square it. Suppose I got 0. What does it mean? We are same. We are similar. So we will be in one cluster. Suppose we are different. We are different cluster. So if you have 500 cases, 500 C2 distances you will calculate. Using some simulation method, we put them in boxes, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. If at all, they are homogeneous. Suppose everything is 0, what happens? 0 or close to 0, one big cluster will form. That means that there is no hit variation in the data. A data is homogeneous, useless. So we say that data should not be skewed. Some, and also we say that it is homogeneous, useless. So it should be moderate. So therefore, there will be no cluster will be formed because there is no variation in the data. All the distances are same. Okay, the, so there are so many types of distances, Euclidean distance, square distance, and Mahalnobis distance, when you, suppose scales are different. So the weight in cages, height in centimeters like that. Then to scale invariant, you use the Mahalnobis distance. So the simple thing is, you are asking the data to tell, hey, tell, tell what you have. So this is called exploratory data analysis. That's why it is called unsupervised learning in data science. So it is, no one is there, you just test and train and leave it unsupervised. Therefore, the cluster analysis is a, a expo an exploratory data analysis where you will get the patterns, if at all they are, they have the variation. You don't get anything zero if they are not. So for that, you have to do all these kind of distances. Fine. So if you see this schematic, the, the clusters within our characteristics are same and between they are different. Then once the clusters are formed, that is up to you to decide and study why the clusters have formed. So it is it's not the end of this, it is just started. Now your research starts. That's why it's called exploratory data analysis. You understand? Fine. So, so I, this is the procedure, but anyhow, you cannot do manually. You have to use some software, which you, there are many softwares available, and Madam also will discuss about that. Okay? So, Basically, what it tells, how alike are the cases. Case means all your characteristics. Suppose when I'm comparing your characteristics, my characteristics are same, we are one cluster. And my mine with others, different, she will fall differently. So like that, a lot of, what do I call, simulations which have been done. Suppose 500 cases, 500 C2 distances. In, after that, there is a method to put them in boxes. I mean clusters, so that will take place. That's, that is a big process. But the idea behind this is in exploratory data analysis to extract the variation among the data sets, which we call as a unsupervised training. Fine. So this is the distance. So you know, know eighth class, ninth class mathematics, the distance between one point to other point. So like that, I calculate all the, here point, point is the characteristics, the features, what you have. Suppose, suppose it's a medical data, Lab values, all the lab values say him and me. I'll calculate the distance and see whether they are same or different. So this is go on doing these distances and put them in boxes. It is a very tedious process, but it's very important process. Fine. So therefore, there are hierarchical, non-hierarchical that Madam will tell you. So this is the way the clusters are formed based on the distances. For example, this is the shortest distance or large, longest. Whether you, you may be similar, you may be dissimilar. I can make both the ways. I can take the dissimilarity and make them one, the different groups. I can make the similarity and make them one group. So either of the ways you can do clustering. Am I right? Yes. So this is the way, no? What is this is called very popular? Tendrogram. Yeah. So this is the way you can, you know what are the clusters formed. So this is, oh, you see ABC is one cluster you can consider. And F and G is one cluster, D and E one cluster. That means that the characteristics of A, what you call A, B, A, B, C is same, must be same. When compared to uh, D, they are different. D when compared to E, G, they are different. So like that, the clusters form because there is a variation. 
If there is no variation, everything is one. Fine. This is the one. Fine. So, how many people, any bioinformatics people are here? Any one of you? Yeah. So, did you use any time the cluster analysis for your microarray data? So, this is the one you get. So, this is the actually bread and butter of you people. I know that. So, this is the one you get. So, many of the microarray uh, analysis being solved or being used with the cluster analysis because this is an explanatory. You have so many genes, so many things. So, with 100, even I've seen 2,200 features. So, 2,200 features, how do you interpret one by one? It's impossible. You cannot do that. So, coming to your thing, why the cluster analysis and PCA has become so popular? Because of this also. You have been, there is a enormous data has been generated. To, if you see this, these many quintillions of data, 2.5 quintillions of data has been generated every day. And every minute, almost 80, 820 terabytes of data has been generated because of you. Already Facebook, you already must have sent some. WhatsApp, you must have sent some. Already Twitter, I think you must have, 50 percent of you already sold, which are very boring lectures are going on. So these are the things which you continuously do that. So that is the data which is open source available. Probably that may not be useful for you for uh, scientific things, but some are there we can use bull. Okay? okay, this is the way the, the, way the uh, principal component analysis or the cluster analysis are very much useful here. So therefore, the very, the theme of this is, if you have huge data, when number of variables are very huge, to reduce the variables, we will reduce the dimension. For reducing the dimension, we use the principal components. And if at all you want to see the patterns, what's happening, you're asking the data, hey, do you, are you, uh, are you having homogeneous or heterogeneous? Are you have any patterns with you? Then you will form into patterns like what you call cluster one, cluster two, cluster three, cluster four. So these are the two important techniques. Other than the conventional, since the morning we have been taught, this is mostly used now, especially in the medical sciences, we, have, we use this because especially in the COVID situation, we have so many variables to deal with. So we have to use this. And in the data science, they are very uh, regularly they use this. So, so I am taking not much time. Now I want to finish it off because um, already time has been consumed. So you should have, because you are all students, you all should have finally an idea. So with idea only everything. So if, if you listen to us and just go, it's not uh, going, not going to help. So you should have an idea, you should implement. I just give you in a uh, um, very funny way. So the idea is only one idea. Idea is one. But there are the three billionaires, they have uh, already been known. There are three billionaires with the same idea. So what is the idea? Who are those billionaires? Number one, who is she? She became a billionaire by writing books. What is the book she has written? Harry Potter. So you are you already, all of you read that? Yes, very good. So she became a billionaire. Who is this man? Warren Buffett. He only reads books and do the, uh, what is that? Uh, um, be a, uh, so he became a billionaire by reading books. There is another very popular person. He became a billionaire by selling books. But the very concept is book. But three people became so. That is the idea. Three aspects, but one item. Book. Book is the concept. But they, so you can have another fourth. You can become fourth billionaire. Okay. Thank you very much. And. I am subjected to questions. Sir, uh, when it comes to the PCA for the analysis, what you have done. Um, your six principal components explain 71 percentage of the variance, right? So, uh, but uh, what about the techniques like uh, ridge lasso elastic regression, wherein your uh, coefficients of the variables, of the 150 variables, they will get automatically uh, reduced down and it'll get shrinked. So, in that case, you don't have to transform these variables into another uh, 
like you need not take a linear combination and form new variables with the existing variables only you can not new, new variable is a linear combination yeah, it's a linear mm. combination so instead of uh, forming a linear combination and taking new pcs we can uh, directly uh, handle the data with whatever the variables are existing and at the same time we will be accounting for complete information rather than taking only 71% of the information okay perfect that's a very good question suppose uh, how do you how do you account for your uh, uh, correlations among the independent variables uh, sir can you, uh, no, you uh, the assumption is that your independent variables should be independent I mean, I mean there will not be any correlation among the variables how do you account for that how do you remove that uh, so you mean to say how by remove multicollinearity yeah. right? yeah. so uh, with with a ridge lasso and elastic regression what happens is the multicollinearity will be handled uh, in the technique so when we uh, when we derive at the coefficients that is considered while uh, uh, minimizing and shrinking and making the coefficients so but it is not full proof uh, you can check it uh, check it up but the, the, the very purpose of the dc is you are dealing with a smaller number with dealing with a smaller number and also the very the total variation is intact that's one one is so your, your actual burden has come down enormously 10 to 15 times second thing is the very purpose of the inter interrelationships or correlations among the independent variables have been removed it means you can just use for your regression without any kind of a um, uh, multicollinearity so the not only the burden but also the second use of this so when you are dealing 150 variables in the elastic regression how do you interpret it is very difficult so 10 15 is okay so 150 i am i'm reducing to 10 or 15 uh, linear combination scores but uh, in this case uh, we don't get to know what's the relationship between uh, like now let's say that i have another variable that i want to predict so using this PC uh, new principal components I want to predict, but I won't get to know the exact relationship between the output variable and the exact variables what were the available in the data. So that's a very good question. Yeah, because no, based on the uh, what you call uh, the eigen values, I have also identified which are the variables that are contributing for PC one. So based on that, you have to interpret. Okay, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Sir. Yes. Yes. Please. So the presentation was very enlightening. Thank you. Uh, in the initial slides, you mentioned that the p variables are all have to be all continuous. But what if we also have discrete, uh, like say classes of data? Say there is age, and it is in our age groups or those kind no, of. No, generally data. PCI is more efficient for the continuous data. Yes, but if we have such variables which are not continuous, is there any method where we could apply? Uh, like we could also use them in the analysis. But, uh, but that is not efficient. You can just use it. Yeah. PCA can be used. So people are using. People are using for the two, three categories also. But that is not very efficient. efficient when it is efficient, when your data is continuous in nature. Got it. Thank you. Yeah, one more. Um, good evening, sir. Good evening. Uh, my question is, in some sense, a continuation of uh, my friend's question here. Uh, when you mentioned about the principal component analysis, um, there was a table uh, you had uh, mentioned that in some sense you can, you know, figure out which variables uh, affect or contribute more to a particular component. And for that you said that in some sense as a rule of thumb we can say that if that value is, you know, uh, 0.5 or greater then you can... Rule of thumb is theory. It's a theory, right. Mm, but I, I told thumb. Okay. So, uh, in, but there are also some negative values over there, right? So when you yeah, is absolute value. I'm so sorry. that's the absolute value, yes, right? Yes. I just wanted to confirm. Yeah. Thank you so much. Regression coefficient also get negative, isn't it? Correct. Thank you. Very good. You are we are very very clean, keen observer. Thank you so.